Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this is a uh, follow-up video to that one on the isolating transformers, which uh, we did uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, there are quite a lot of comments on this one about the earth connection and how it actually works if you've got an isolating transformer. So uh, let's have a look at that and uh, hopefully answer the questions which were put there. Now, as we saw previously, an isolating transformer has a mains input, so say line and neutral, and then you've got the central core, and then the output of the transformer is a totally separate and hence isolated winding, and that gives out the same voltage typically as you would put in, so if it was 240 volts on the input, you would also get 240 volts on the output. And all main systems in the UK, and in fact most other countries, are referenced to ground, which means that the neutral at some point is connected to the actual physical ground. Not necessarily in this transformer, but uh, there will be a link there somewhere. And this is why if you uh, touch the uh, line conductor and you're standing on the ground, then you're going to get a 240 volt electric shock. And the isolating transformer is uh, obviously isolated from the main supply here, and does not have any connection to actual earth whatsoever. So although you've got 240 volts between the outputs here, it's uh, not connected in any way, so you can touch either one of these, even if you're standing on the ground and not receive a shock. And the only way to get a shock from the isolating transformer is to touch both of the output connectors at the same time, so you'd have to really make a fairly good effort to actually get into that situation. Now in terms of the actual earth connection, uh, that transformer that I've got and uh, most others have a three pin outlet and uh, in the case of the one I have the uh, wires to the transformer just come over to the socket pin so call live and uh, neutral and the earth is actually from the building earth so uh, there is an earth connection in the plug and that actually just goes back to the uh, normal earth connection and effectively is connected to the actual ground somewhere at some point and ultimately it will be connected back to the uh, neutral of the incoming supply. But that doesn't particularly matter because uh, because this is obviously a winding here, there's no electrical connection. If you measure between this earth and the neutral and this earth and the live, you would get absolutely nothing. And again, if you just grab hold of this and one of these, again, nothing will happen. It's just that the earth is brought through from the main supply because it's obviously convenient to do so. And in many cases, it would be a useful thing to have. And it may have other issues in terms of sort of reducing, say, interference if it was, say, a radio or television or something. Now, another one which uh, was the building site transformer is uh, quite similar in its construction. So you've got your supply coming in, so you've got your uh, line neutral, and so you've got an earth wire coming in from the mains lead or whatever you've got connected. The uh, line and neutral go to the transformer winding, and again, you have your 240 volts there between the two conductors. And the earth coming in, again, that's going to be from the earth lead in the plug. And again, at some point back in the distribution system, there's going to be a connection between the neutral and the earth, just as there is in any installation. And inside the transformer, again, you've got the core there. And the output winding is technically isolated from the input, so that uh, in this configuration it's simply just another isolating transformer. But in the case of the building site variety, there's a couple of important differences. The first difference is that the earth wire here that actually comes into the plug is actually connected to the center point of this winding. And the other point as well is that this comes out to the output here. So in your three pin plug, which is normally one of those yellow things, You've got your three pins, so you might put it say line, neutral, and earth. And this is generally 110 volts, so between line and neutral is 110. And because of this central connection, you actually get 55 volts here and 55 volts there. But between the line and neutral, which is where your piece of tools or equipment or whatever you're connected, then you get the 110 volts. But uh, because of this earth connection here, if you were standing on the ground and you grabbed hold of this conductor or this conductor, then you're going to get a shock of 55 volts because, say, at some point this is going to be connected back to the uh, real earth somewhere, probably through the uh, distribution network. So if you're standing here on the ground on the uh, disgusting building site and you happen to come into contact with the conductor here, then you've created a circuit, so you've got 55 volts between this conductor and the ground, so basically 55 volts beyond across your body, and of course you will get a shock. 
And the point of this is that 55 volts is much safer than 240, and it's certainly quite a bit safer than the 110. And 55 volts generally won't cause any uh, lasting injury or damage, although it's certainly plenty enough to actually feel, so uh, certainly not something I'd recommend doing. So although the transformer itself is isolated from the mains input, it does not mean that if you just grab hold of one of these wires you're not going to get a shock, because you will. It's simply that the voltage is actually reduced down to a 55 volt level. And notice in this case, because it's a central connection, it applies whether you're contacting, contacting the uh, line or the neutral, as they're both at 55 volts with respect to the uh, actual earth or the ground here. And of course, if you were stupid enough to uh, grab hold of both of those, then you're going to get 110 volts from that. Now, it may be possible if you bought one of these uh, building site transformers to modify it so that the output is in fact totally isolated and not referenced to earth anymore. And essentially, that would be uh, deleting the uh, central tap connection. And then essentially, it's going to have a 110 volt output isolating transformer. But that's not going to be very useful because, of course, in the UK, uh, it's the wrong voltage for most of things. And it may not be possible to actually access these connections because most of these site transformers inside are generally fully potted with resin or full of sand or some other material, so uh, they're not particularly easy to get into and modify. But uh, nevertheless, in theory, you can do that. So earth connection on the isolating transformer is really there just as a convenience. It is connected back to the uh, earthing of the building or the installation, and of course uh, to the actual earth or ground itself. But there's no connection between the two outputs, so again, no voltage between uh, any of those. And whether you have it connected or not is really a matter of personal choice. And the uh, building site transformer, similar inside, but you've got this uh, connection in the centre of the winding. So the earth on that one is connected to the mains earth that comes in, and it's also referenced to the voltages coming out on the transformer. So uh, although it's an isolating transformer in theory, the fact you've then got this connection going back to mains earth means it's then referenced to earth. The only benefit is the voltage output is considerably lower and therefore a lot safer if it's on a building site where it's going to be a fairly wet and unpleasant environment, and things are fairly likely to get damaged, and the risk of shock is fairly high. And a final point on these is you may be wondering why bother with this central connection, why not just have it as an isolating transformer on the building site, because of course then if you touch either one of these then of course there's no shock at all. But the problem is on a building site, particularly when you've got uh, cables and things trailing all over the place, and there's uh, dozens of people using all kinds of different tools and machinery all over the place, is that if you get a fault on any one of those pieces of equipment somewhere on a, say, a huge site, might be building like a huge block of 300 flats or something, then let's say that a fault occurred which connected this conductor here, and that somehow got uh, connected to the mains earth, and all that would need is, say, a cable with a bit of damage, or a sort of a chafed lead or something, then, of course, nothing will actually happen, because, uh, again, this is now just referenced here, the same as the mains, but, of course, it means that anyone else on the site connected to this power here, you've now got the full 240 volts there, just the same as you would have if you were using the full mains voltage. And the problem is that this type of fault would go unnoticed until a second fault occurred, and then that's when you get people being electrocuted. And, of course, the same thing would apply if it was the other conductor, so if this was not here, because these are effectively both the same, so if this conductor became connected to ground, again, when that first happened, nothing would actually occur, but then if there was another fault from this conductor, this is then at 240 volts with respect to the ground here. So isolating transformers are perfectly safe, provided they remain isolated, but as soon as you've got that connection, due to a fault or something somewhere, then you're basically back to exactly the same situation as you would be with the normal mains voltage, and again, you're going to get that full 240 or whatever the voltage is between whatever the fault is and the actual ground itself. This is also why they're not used to supply houses and other businesses, because again, whilst there's no fault at all, it's perfectly safe. But of course, any single fault will uh, put, basically put you back to the uh, earth reference system that's extensively used. So uh, this is used here by essentially putting in that earth reference as a permanent fixture. So then you know if a shock does occur, it's essentially minimising it and reducing it to the 55 volts, rather than just relying on the fact that uh, it's isolated, because, say, the realities are that a fault can occur anywhere, and it only needs one fault to uh, put it back to the same as the direct reference to Earth mains with the full 240 volts. Now, this side transformer, you've also seen that uh, video where it's used to uh, provide a basically a test current output, 
and uh, that's just using half of the transformer. And the uh, situation with that is that you've got your main supply coming in, line neutral, and of course the uh, earth there. This actually goes into a variable transformer or variac, and essentially that's the uh, same thing there, and it has a adjustable tap here so uh, as that position moves by rotating the handle the voltage on the output here will vary between basically zero and the full uh, 240 volts. These two wires go to the input of that site transformer which as we saw previously has the three outputs and then the item under test is in fact connected to only two of these, and it's one of the conductors here and the center one, which means your voltage here is going to be between 0 and 55, depending on the input voltage. This one here is not connected. And of course we know that this is already connected to earth uh, within the plug, so the earth actually would come through to that, like that. So in this arrangement, the output here is not actually isolated, it's still reference to the mains earth and the ground. And the purpose of only using part of the winding here is it's uh, reducing the voltage down so you get much better control over the current you've got here because bearing in mind this could in fact be virtually a short circuit here. In theory you could do it from the variac directly but the problem is you'd find then that uh, even if you turned up say the voltage to say two or three volts you'd find the current was sort of in the tens of amps already so you'd have very little control. And the uh, particular variac I've got is only rated to around 8 amps, which is not a great deal. Of course, if you're putting 8 amps into here, you've got essentially 240 volts here. Because you're reducing the voltage down to a maximum of 55, it's uh, roughly a 4 to 1 ratio, then instead of 8 amps on the output, you can actually have around 4 times as much. So your voltage is basically divided by 4, that means the current can then be multiplied by 4. So instead of 8 amps there, you can have around 30 amps or so on the output. So these are only approximate figures, I mean in theory it's 32, but uh, obviously 55 times 4 isn't exactly 240 either. And again that gives you much better control, so the actual range here on the dial is uh, a bit more controllable, so you can get over the uh, full current range on the output. And as well as being uh, reference to maze earth, it means that the maximum voltage here is only going to be 55, so even if you somehow crank this to maximum and this one open circuit and then you went and grabbed hold of it, you're still only going to get that 55 volts to earth, which of course is uh, reasonably safe, whereas the uh, 240 volts, of course, most definitely is not. And note that the output here is purely just altering the voltage, so voltage in is altered, and that obviously alters the voltage on the output. And the current is simply a factor of whatever the resistance is of the thing you've connected. So if you turn up the voltage, then more current flows, and if you turn down the voltage, then uh, less current flows as well. And you've probably seen this in the uh, other videos whereby if the uh, item in question heats up, then the resistance of it increases and then the current will fall, so then it's necessary to uh, turn up the voltage a bit to compensate. So it's a fairly basic setup, but it does the job fairly well and it's uh, fairly cheap and easy to arrange. So hopefully that's answered at least some of the questions about the isolating transformer and also the uh, building site version as well. Now it may well be possible to modify one of those building site transformers to give an isolated output, you'd have to sort of open the lid and uh, disconnect that uh, connection to the center tapping. But uh, of course some of them say are potted in resin or full of sand or other unpleasant materials so that may not be possible. And even if it was, bearing in mind the output is still going to be 110 volts so not really what you want for powering 240 volt appliances. But uh, the advantage of those building site ones is they are much cheaper and far more plentiful and you can pick those up second hand for virtually nothing pretty much anywhere whereas the isolating ones are somewhat more difficult to find, but uh, nevertheless they can be had. So until next time, thanks for watching.